All right, Accelerate. So, we are playing a game that I have fought hard to get Courtney to play with me. We are playing Bean Boozled I'm today. I'm freaking out. Like, my hands are, like, shaky. <laughs> I really don't want to do this. If you <laughs> don't know what Bean Boozled is, it's simply a game of jelly beans. Um, now, we will spin. If you see here, there's a little spinner here. It'll tell us what jelly bean to eat. It may be a good jelly bean. It may be a bad jelly bean. Um, so... Just to let you know, it could be anywhere from a stink bug to a toasted marshmallow, to rotten eggs, to toothpaste, yeah. to barf, uh -huh. to canned dog food, to a booger, to spoiled milk. I didn't milk. even read them. They're making it so much worse Hold than on. it was. Let's see. To dish soap. Uh. What else? Dirty dish water, um, dead fish, and stinky oh. socks. Um, now, on the opposite of that, there are good ones like toasted marshmallow. Those are the ones I'm going to get. Birthday cake. Buttered popcorn, blue be uh, berry blue, peach, chocolate pudding, okay. a juicy pear, coconuts, tutti frutti, and strawberry banana smoothie. Um, so those are our options. The game is simple. We will play five rounds. Uh, each one of us will get a chance to spin the dial. We both will then eat whatever it hits oh, on. So for five rounds, we're both eating one jelly bean. In the name of Jesus, Courtney will get all the bad ones. Uh, uh, we do have water up here. I do have a trash can down here. I suspect Courtney is going to, well, what's that one jelly bean? Uh, oh, barf. I'm just saying. Uh, so, you want to kick us off? <laughs> I want to pray. You want to? No. All right. Um, Spin your dial. First dial is on oh. either chocolate pudding or canned dog food. Courtney, pick yours. Can I smell it? No. Ready? No. Three? Here, here's my jelly bean. I'm not ready. There's Courtney's. Ready? Three, two, one. What was the good option? I got chocolate pudding. Me too. What? Mm -mm. <laughs> <laughs> what was yours? Not chocolate pudding. What did it taste like? Uh, uh, not chocolate pudding. What did it taste like? Poop. Like what? Like poop. It tastes like poop. Oh, your breath stinks. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Ooh, okay. Was it salty? Because it smells super salty. All right, my turn. Yeah, next roll. I need next roll. Popcorn or something either a dead fish oh, or a strawberry man. banana what's it look like oh it's oh it's this one it looks like that it's solid so it looks like there's one right there Courtney all right three uh, I can already tell you that this one's bad <laughs> I, I should the not box have... smells like bark <laughs> I should not have smelled this one all right three two one. No. Strawberry banana. Oh my gosh. That one was way, oh, I can breathe. Ugh. I, that one's bad. Oh, Willie, that one's terrible. That was good. Other than I don't no. like strawberries. I don't like fish. I don't like fish when it's good fish. That was spoiled fish. Okay. Uh-uh. Spin it again. We already tried that one. Spin it again. Something's wrong with the table. Hey, let's not make a mess. Uh, you know, like, when you right. taste something bad and you can taste it more when you breathe? Like, if I don't breathe through my nose, it doesn't taste as bad. All right. This is buttered popcorn or rotten eggs. Oh, I need some buttered popcorn. Uh, uh, here we go. Three. Two. My nose is one. Ugh. Oh. How do we both? Oh. I don't think I could go five rounds. Oh, we got two more rounds. Oh. I just wanted better uh, popcorn. That one was so nasty. Uh. My eyes are watering. 
Oh, it stays. I, that's what I said. Like, if you breathe through your nose, it, it's all... Ugh. Oh, that ruins everything. Oh, this is not worth it, buddy. Okay, so you're right, my turn. turn. No more dead fish. Juicy, I can't do it again. Juicy pear or boogers. Ugh. Right here. Is there only one? No, there's one. I don't see it either. You got this one on your own. No, oh, my gosh. Here. No. <laughs> Ready? <laughs> no, I still I taste know. rotten eggs. Oh. Okay. One, two, three. I don't know what it is. Uh, mine was a booger. It was so salty. No. I just don't like pears, I guess. Oh. I mean, it was better than the... No, it was so salty. Rotten egg, but oh. I don't like pears. No, that one was disgusting. It was way better than them. Your, yours. Last this round. This is the last round. Yeah, All right, last good. round. We got to make it interesting. We oh. do two different ones. You spin one, I'll spin one. We do both I at the same time. I take whichever one we want. Here, let's do the... I'm going to try this one. Which one? All right, I got this one. I got birthday cake. And we got to do one Jesus, more. Jesus, I got birthday cake. No, we don't. Mm -mm. What, what are your options? You either have a stink bug or a toasted marshmallow. And I have either birthday cake or dirty dishwasher. I could throw them up right now. Don't do it. Ready? Yeah. One, two... Oh, that trash can stink. Mm -hmm. Got him. Ah! Oh, ooh! I ate soap. Ah. Ah. <clears throat> okay. If you're going to play this game with your friends, rig it somehow. Because I have like... Oh. Rotten egg soap in my mouth right now. We're gonna have to get back to you guys. That sound is disgusting. Ah, you should have a stink bug. Oh, all right, guys. Courtney walked away. <laughs> we'll see you guys. What's up, Accelerate? Welcome to another week of royalty. The series that we're on, we're on week two of a three week series. And last week was all about bringing it. Uh, in fact, the title was Bring It, yeah. uh, where we started the story of David and Goliath and breaking down David's uh, part in all of this. So, and we can't wait to dig into this week. So last week we really focused on how David really, he spent time being humble. Even though he knew he was going to be king, he didn't let that keep him from obeying what God was asking of him in this season. And so last week he had basically been like Uber Eats for his brothers. And he was taking food out to his brothers who were on the battlefield. And when he got out there, there was a giant who was basically mocking God and all of God's people. And the, the soldiers were pretty much just taking it. Like, they weren't fighting back. They weren't defending God. They were overcome by fear, yeah. pretty much. And this kind of blew David's mind because he just couldn't understand how they could sit and let them talk bad about a God that he had such a phenomenal relationship with and had built so much trust in. And so he didn't understand why they wouldn't stand up for him. And David took it upon himself to say, you know what, I'll fight him. Yeah. I will defend God, I'll defend my God, because I know that if I stand up for God, God will not let me fail. And so David did that. He decided that he was gonna take on this giant, and he said that he would fight him. And so the king of that time was King Saul, and he basically wanted David to go to battle and to fight this fight, but he wanted to do it. Saul's way. Yeah. He wanted, he wanted David to do it like he would do it. Yeah. And so he brought him up and he tried to deck him out in Saul's armor. Yeah. And David was a boy, so he wasn't a full grown man yet. And so Saul's armor was too big and too clunky on him. And David was like, you know what? No. Mm -hmm. Because David had a confidence because he had found his identity in God. 
And he knew that if he was going to accomplish this, he was going to have to be who God created him to be. He couldn't be what Saul wanted him to be. He had to be the David that God had created him to be. And I love it. His confidence wasn't in himself. His confidence wasn't in right. his ability, but it was in his relationship with God is where his confidence lied. Um, so point one for this week is take confidence in what God has called you to do. Um, when, when, God for, when God calls you to do something, he's not going to uh, sit back and watch you fail. Right. Um, so in David's instance, God called him to be the next king over Israel. And, and God created opportunity uh, as, as he was a shepherd to take the chance to become confident in what God has created him to do. Uh, we talked about last week how God brought an opportunity of uh, right. David killing a bear and brought an opportunity uh, for David to kill a lion. Um, now David has an opportunity to face his biggest trial yet. Yeah. Uh, this giant Goliath in front of him. And so David, and he has, he has a choice here. He could either follow what Saul's saying and, and place his confidence right. in someone else and start comparing himself to the king of Israel right now. He could have said, well, man, Saul is bigger than me. Right. He's stronger than me. Oh, that sounds like a TikTok song. <laughs> but no, it, he, David had a chance to compare himself to others. And when you begin to to compare and measure yourself up against someone else, yeah. you tend to make yourself smaller than what you really are. Or when you start looking at what God has planned for you and then what God has planned for what you see God doing in somebody else's life, you start saying, oh, wait, maybe, maybe they should do this. Maybe I'm not good enough, yeah. but they should. But here's the thing. Nothing kills the call of God on your life faster than comparison. Right. Man, God has a specific pur purpose for you, um, and that purpose can only be fulfilled through you. And in David's instance, David was called to be king, but before he could be king, he was called to destroy a bear, and he was called to destroy a lion, and he was called to destroy a, a giant that stood in his way. But if he would have stopped, let Saul influence what God was calling for him. So if he allowed man to start comparing and start uh, measuring up what God called him to do, it would have destroyed the plan in his life. Right. So point two is be you. God has called you to do something specific. God has given you certain gifts and talents, um, certain things that he's laid on your heart that you're passionate about that maybe somebody else that you know could care less about. God's placed those things in you, and he wants you to do what he's called you to do. Yeah. And so you can't look at other people and compare you know, what God has called them to do and what God's called you to do. You have to focus in on, God, what have you called me to do? Who have you called me to reach? Who have you called me to impact? When God calls you to do something, you're going to do great things for God if you expect great things from God. Yeah. So you have to go into your day, into your situations expectant that God is going before you, that you have spent your quiet time with God and you know that this is the will of God and he's not going to let you fail because you are walking in what he called you to do. Absolutely. David, and I love David, David expected God to to be with him when he stood up against the the bear and the lion, and he and he expected God to be the same as he was before in the moment that he stood before Goliath. Um, now, if if David, like you were saying, just went in there like, oh man, maybe maybe I hope that God will be with me when when I when I do this. I I hope that uh, I'll be good enough. Man, if he would have been like that, 
the confidence that he would have had would have been gone. Right. But because he decided to be himself, he knew that, man, he killed the bear and the lion with a sling and a stone. And so guess what? He runs to a river, he right. picks up five stones, he grabs a sling, and he heads out to battle in full confidence in who he is because he knows who his God is. Right. Now, you can only be you when you allow God to be the center of who you are. Right. Now, there's a lot of times we're like, oh, I'm being me, and realistically, we're just comparing ourselves to someone else. But when we start comparing, if we want to talk about comparing, if we start comparing who I am with who God is, and we start aligning who I am with who God is, that's when we will not fail. Right. So part three is just this. Giants don't fall for fakes. Right. And David knew where he was getting his confidence from, and it was from God. No, it was not from Saul. It was not or from Or his Saul. armor. Or his armor. Or his weapons. Right. Man, it's definitely not his army because they were yeah. terrified. Like they hadn't done anything to this point. They were just sitting there letting Goliath do whatever and say whatever he wanted to. Absolutely. Man, if he would have looked at Saul's army and said, well, I can make this work, and picked up Saul's sword and said, well, I guess I can make this work, yeah. and went out to battle, Goliath would have made a heyday making fun of right. David. In fact, he had a heyday making fun of David <laughs> when he had a stone and a slingshot. Right. But what happened was, because he chose to be confident in the authority of God that he was standing in, that giant, yeah, made fun of him. Yeah, that giant came rushing at him. Right. Yeah, that giant made him feel little. But here's the crazy thing. That giant didn't stand a chance because David was not fake in that moment. Right. David knew that as long as he stood in the confidence of God, and he knew who had his back, and he knew that God was the one true God, and as long as he put God number one, and I'm saying God a lot because I want you to really focus <laughs> and know that it's God that made David confident in this moment. Who knew that no matter what came, no matter how big the giant that was running in front of him, as long as he stood in confidence that God was his God, the same that destroyed the lion, the same that destroyed the bear, was going to destroy the giant. He knew that he could be a light to the whole army that was trembling. Right. And he knew that he was going to get the victory. In fact, in Matthew 5, 6, it says, In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. David was not destroying this giant for himself. Right. He was destroying this giant because it was standing in the way of him worshiping and praising God as a nation. Right. So, and every time you find yeah. your confidence in God and not do it fake, not say, oh, I have confidence, but right. not, not have the relationship when with that God. that pressure's on. Then the giant will fall before you and God. Right. David didn't look the way that I'm sure Goliath had envisioned the person that would take him down. If anybody took him down, I do not think he would have pictured David in his head. Just like the whole world didn't really have the picture of Jesus yeah. when he came, they didn't think that he looked the way that that Savior should have looked. Sometimes things don't always look the way that we think they're going to. But if we trust God and we say, you know what, God, I am, I am whatever you want from me, I will do it. I am moldable. I am here to learn and receive from you. Then God's going to take that humble heart, just like he took David's humble heart. And he's going to elevate you more and more as you trust in him, as you rely on him, as you confide in him. Yeah. 
during the seasons that make sense or don't make sense. And there are some of you and you're saying, you know what, I can't rely on him. I can't get to know him because I, I don't know him at all. Yeah. Like I've never had a relationship with God and like I don't even know where to start. Well, all you got to do is ask him to come live in your heart. And it's so easy. And God is waiting to have a relationship with you because he has called you to do something great. He's given you everything that you need to do that. But you have to trust him. You have to rely on him. So if you haven't asked Jesus in your heart, we want to pray with you today. If you'll bow your heads and close your eyes and just repeat this prayer if you want to ask Christ to live in your heart. Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I love you. And I thank you for dying on the cross for me. And I thank you for dying on the cross for me. God, come in my heart. Come in my heart, God. Make me new. Make me new. And help me to live for you. And help me live for you. Help me to find my identity. Help me find my identity. In you. In you. Help me to do. Help me to do. All that you've called me to. All that you've called me to. In your name. In your name. Amen. Amen. Man. If you made that decision today, let us know. Right. Like, realistically, we want to know because we want to celebrate with you. So DM us, message us, uh, Snapchat us, text us, whatever way you want to. Right. Let us know. And before we end, two quick reminders. Make sure that you're participating in this week's Top That Challenge to earn a pizza. Um, and make sure that you join tomorrow night at 8 o'clock for Zoom. As yeah. we hang out and chill, play a couple games, get a chance to win another pizza. Um, so make sure you don't want to miss it. It's a lot of fun. Uh, I'm on there, so it's pretty cool. <laughs> I'm just saying. Uh, let's pray and end this. Jesus, you're absolutely amazing. Thank you so much that we are learning about David and the confidence that he found in you. God, we pray that you would allow us to have confidence in you. And you would allow these students to have confidence in you, not in themselves. God, we pray that we wouldn't compare ourselves against others, but only compare ourselves to what you want for us. God, we love you in your name. Amen. Amen.